let's just double check. Yep, here we go. All right, so uh, we're gonna start something kind of new today and um, we'll go to a new page. So today's uh, 23 March, oops. Okay, so basically what uh, related rates are, it's um, uh, implicit differentiation plus story problem. Which of course I know means that it's everybody's favorite, uh, favorite topic. Um, Okay, so we'll just start with a, a simple a simple example. Um, so let's say that we have a, a circle, and I'm going to try and use my fancy circle drawer. There we go. Um, all right, so we've got a circle, and let's say that the radius of it is expanding at a rate of, uh, let's say, five centimeters per hour. Okay, so the first thing to uh, um, the first thing to uh, uh, think about there is uh, what does it mean for the radius to be expanding at a particular rate? Well, if we write this symbolically, we would say dr dt is 5. Um, okay. Um, and uh, why is it dr dt? Well, if we're talking about things changing over time, then uh, the dependent variable ought to be uh, t, uh, time. Okay, so then the kinds of questions that we could ask is how fast does the area change or the circumference? Um, okay, so uh, the first step for that is, well, what's the area formula of a circle? Um, you guys, of course, remember, right, A equals pi r squared. Okay, so this, uh, or for that matter, the circumference, uh, those two things are our sort of starting equations uh, that tell us how the two variables uh, relate together. Um, in this case, so either the area, the circumference, the radius, okay, so all of those things. Uh, okay, uh, and so if we want to know how fast the area is changing or the circumference is changing, what we want to know is dA dt. Or over on this side, what's the derivative of the circumference? All right, so then we just need to take the derivative of both things here. And this is where we have to be careful because uh, really we're doing everything here implicitly. What is the derivative of pi r squared? It's 2 pi r times dr dt. And that's because we're doing everything with respect to uh, t is the variable. Similarly, over here for the derivative of the circumference, it would be 2 pi times dr dt. And probably the, the biggest mistake that happens in these sorts, of, uh, these sorts of problems is forgetting the dr dt's or d whatever dt's. And those things are there because of the chain rule. Um, okay, so uh, be careful not to forget those. Um, 
Okay, so that gets us uh, the derivative uh, of either thing. And then in this case, we know that that dr dt was five. So uh, dA dt is two pi r times five and dc dt is two pi times five, which is 10 pi. Um, and uh, this would be in centimeters per hour. And this would also be in centimeters per hour. Okay, so what's interesting uh, about that is that the rate at which the circumference is changing is constant. Uh, it's just 10 pi centimeters per hour. Whereas the rate at which the area is changing is not constant. It still depends on R in some way. Um, and so that kind of makes sense because if you think about um, you think about the the uh, a circle, right? As the radius expands, the area gets bigger, but the rate at which the area is getting bigger uh, is not constant over time. Um, uh, maybe an, an easier way to, to to sort of visualize that would be like, let's say you were inflating a balloon uh, at a constant volume. The uh, the rate at which the radius is expanding would 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 be different. Um, okay, so that's sort of the basic uh, basic idea of uh, related rates, and um, uh, right. Uh, okay, so any any questions about uh, that process? Um, uh, just before we move on to a new another example. So, uh, questions, put them in the, the Discord chat, and I muted my audio in the Discord so that I uh, wouldn't be double, double transmitting. Sorry about that earlier. Um, Looks like we're good. Okay. Um, all right. So let's move on to another another kind of problem here. Um, so let's suppose that we've got uh, a situation where we have, say, a traffic intersection, and you are in. So let's call this point A. This point C and this point B, and you're in a car at point A, or I mean, uh, sorry, point B. And a cop and the cop is driving towards the intersection and you're driving away from the intersection. And let's just suppose for sake of example um, that both of you are one mile away from um, the, um, um, uh, you, you two both are one mile away from the, uh, from the intersection. Okay, so um, let's suppose you're driving 30, well, let's make it something more interesting. Let's say you're speeding at 60 miles an hour and the cop is driving at say 40 miles per hour. So, the question that we'd like to ask is how fast is the distance between you and the cop changing? All right, so that's our, our uh, question. 
All right, so uh, in order to do this, we need some sort of equation that's going to relate everything together. The other thing we need to do is start labeling variables, and we need to make this picture a little bit more complete. So let's call this, um, well, yeah, let me just use Z, and let's call the distance that you are away from the intersection X and the distance that the cop is away from the intersection Y. So we need an equation that relates all three of those variables together. So what, uh, what sounds like a good idea, guys? Bingo. All right, so we need Pythagoras' theorem. Now, there's a lot of ways we could write that, but hopefully you guys will see in a second that the easiest way is actually just the way that you memorize this in school. Um, I could solve that for z, but then I'd have a pesky square root. Um, and um, uh, which is fine, but uh, it'll actually be easier if we take it like this and do everything implicitly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the key equation. And in pretty much every related rates problem, there's going to be some equation or maybe a, a kind of a, several equations that are going to relate all of the variables in question um, to you or uh, in question in the problem. And in this case, and in many kinds of these problems, it'll be Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so that's our key equation. And now uh, what we want to do with that is uh, differentiate it. So next we differentiate. G8. Um, but keep in mind that this needs to be done implicitly. So the derivative would be 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt plus 2z, or sorry, equals 2z dz dt. Okay, so what started as an equation with three variables, x, y, and z, now has six, x, y, z, and also dx dt, dy dt, dz dt, the rates at which those things are changing. Um, okay, so in this case then, um, what um, we need to substitute in what we know about the two rates at which we're driving. So let's come back up to here. Um, if I'm driving 60 miles an hour, what does that say about dx dt? And similarly, if the cop is driving at 40 miles an hour, then uh, what are those two things got to be? So what does dx dt need to be? And what does dy dt need to be? Well, none, don't jump up all at once. Yeah, okay, so dx dt is one mile a minute. I'll go ahead and leave it in, in miles per hour just for consistency, but yeah. Um, so this one is 60. And now the fun one, what's dy dt? Ah, okay, so we have a little bit of a disagreement. 40 or negative 40? Okay, which one makes sense here? Um, why should it be negative 40 and not 40? So 
think about that for a second. So it needs to be negative 40 because the distance that the uh, the cop is away from the, the intersection is decreasing over time. Okay, so that means that the derivative should be a negative number. Uh, okay, and so now that we have this, let's think about find dz dt when x equals y equals 1 and dx dt equals 60, dy dt equals negative 40. Okay, so at this point, we get to just start plugging everything in. So we'd have 2 times 1 times 60 plus 2 times 1 times negative 40 equals 2 times z times dz dt. And the goal of the problem was to solve for dz dt. Um, there's just one minor problem with that. Do we know what z is yet? We know x and y, but we don't know what z is. So we need to solve for z first. Uh, let me put that in green. Okay, and so we can kind of come over and say, oh, well, x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and x and y uh, are both equal to 1, so 2 equals z squared, and hence z is the square root of 2. Um, so now that we've got that, we can just substitute that in right there for, uh, for z. So that gets us 120 minus, oops, sorry, minus 80 equals 2 square root of 2 times dz dt. And uh, so 40 equals 2 root 2 dz dt. And therefore uh, dz dt equals uh, 40 over 2 root 2 which is 20 over root 2. And if you don't like uh, then it would be uh, that. And this would be in miles per hour. And just for um, for uh, completeness sake um, uh, the square root of 2 is like 1.414 so this is like uh, this is about 14 miles an hour uh, difference, and which uh, maybe seems reasonable um, given uh, given the sort of parameters that uh, that set up the problem. Um, okay, so um, what uh, any questions that we have on on that one? We Gucci or are we Prada? Come on, guys, let's wake up. All right. Um, okay, so let's go on to one that's um, a little bit more uh, fun. Um, so let's uh, let's suppose that the um, the coronavirus crisis is over, 
and that means that we can all go out to restaurants again. Uh, and in particular, you could go out to a bar and have a martini. So uh, what does a martini glass look like? Well, most martini glasses, at least the ones that I've had, basically, if you look at them from the side, they look like that, right? And then we've got, um, right, we got our little olive there. Um, so um, let's get rid of the olive. So uh, the martini glass, we can basically look at as being a, an upside down cone. And uh, at least in my experience drinking martinis, uh, the, uh, the cone is kind of squared off. So if the radius uh, of the cone is R, then the height of the cone happens also to be exactly R. Um, that's probably not true about every martini glass, but I think most of them uh, tend to have that kind of shape. Um, so let's, um, let's say that when you drink your martini, okay, so when you drink the martini, uh, actually, you know what, let me make a copy of the, the diagram here. That'll make things easier. Copy. Paste. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to doctor up the diagram a little bit, and uh, I'm going to say, oops, um, we'll have, instead of the radius and the height, um, we'll have, when you drink it, let's say that the fluid level is here, okay? And so actually I'm going to come up and I'm going to relabel the variables. So let me, let me actually pretend that, that the radius of the martini glass is big R and uh, why that, why I'm choosing to label it big R versus little R uh, will become clear in a second. So when you drink it, then the, uh, the fluid level, um, describes a cone, but it's not exactly the same cone as the, the one that you started with. It is, however, similar. Okay, so after you take a sip, then the, uh, the smaller cone, which here I've sort of outlined in blue, is like a miniature version of the big cone, uh, but it has its own radius and in this case, it has its own height, um, but because the glass that we're working with is squared off, the height and the radius are the, t the same thing. Uh, okay, and that's why I wanted to label uh, the actual height and actual radius of the liquid cone uh, with little r, and then the shape of the original glass with big r, um, just so that we're not mixing apples and oranges. Okay, so then the, the first question is, what is the key equation? So what is going to, what is the thing that we're interested in? Um, in this case, uh, if we're talking about a martini, uh, we might be interested in how fast the, the little r changes in time. And, well, what else is happening to the martini? Presumably it's being consumed. So what we want to know is what's the volume of the martini? Uh, so does anybody happen to remember the volume formula for a cone? And survey says, anybody remember? Something with a one third. Yeah, okay. It's one third pi r squared h. 
Um, okay, yeah. <laughs> now, in this case, what do we know about the relationship between R and H? For our particular martini, um, for our particular martini glass, uh, the radius and the height are always the same. Um, that doesn't have to be true in general, uh, obviously, but uh, for this specific one, it is. So it's one third pi r cubed um, because r equals h. All right, so let's say dv dt equals, well, so what's the derivative of one third pi r cubed? It would be one third times three times pi r squared times dr dt. And uh, so if we simplify that, then it's just pi r squared dr dt, the threes cancel. And uh, I may be beating a dead horse here, but where's the, why is the dr dt there? Yep, <laughs> I'm, I'm really going to beat that. Because uh, if you forget that, then things are going to be uh, really messed up. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's say that, um, that our martini glass, uh, and I'm just going to make up numbers here. Um, let's say that the radius of the thing is, uh, we're going to, say five centimeters um, and we consume at one cubic centimeter per minute okay that's probably a little bit too fast but uh, okay so where did the three oh no you got it Matt okay good um, so let's say that you're drinking at uh, one centimeter cube per minute well so if I'm drinking my beverage here at one centimeter cube per minute, then what does that make dvdt? I really need to get like the Jeopardy music and stuff like that, like all the cool streamers. So what's DVDT, guys? Oh, and also, I just realized my iPad's clock is way off. Huh. Because it is totally not Tuesday, January 9th, either. All right, so why is it negative 1 instead of 1? Yeah, so why negative one? Yeah, so why does it have to be negative? Well, okay, so Willie, DRDT will be negative because DVDT is negative, but that doesn't answer the question why DVDT is negative in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt, that's probably the best way I can think to. <laughs> if only English actually worked that way. The drink is getting drank. Uh, all right, yeah, it's negative because you're drinking the thing. Um, okay, so, um, so now that we know that, we can go back to our original equation, which we had dv dt was equal to pi r squared dr dt, which implies that negative one 
is pi r squared times dr dt. Okay, so I'm going to solve this thing for dr dt. And it's negative 1 over pi r squared. Okay, so that's the, uh, the relationship between um, dr dt and r. Now, if I start with an initial um, radius of 5 centimeters, what I'd like to do is let's make a, a kind of a little table here, and let's say that we have r and dr dt. Okay, and um, I'm just going to pick 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 for sake of uh, arithmetic. And um, I'm going to switch over to Mathematica um, for a second, uh, just for the sake of doing some number crunching. All right, so let me get uh, OBS switched over here. Um, okay, so... Sorry about the inception. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define here uh, a function, and it's negative 1 over pi times r squared. And then I just want to compute f of 5, f of 4, f of 3, f of 2, and f of 1, and I get those numbers there. And But um, just for sake of demonstration, I'm going to put a decimal in so that it gives it to me in, um, uh, gives it to me as a decimal. Um, okay, so if I plug all those in, so I'll write them in on the iPad real quick. So negative 0, point, or sorry, negative 0.012 negative 0.019, negative 0.035, negative 0.079, and negative, three, negative 0.31. Okay, so we'll go back to the iPad. Okay, so those were the numbers that we computed uh, just real quickly with, with Mathematica. Um, so what I want to kind of point out here is look at the um, look at the numbers uh, for the rate at which the radius of the drink and therefore the height of the drink uh, is changing. They're all negative. That makes sense because we're drinking the thing. Um, but is it surprising to you, or does it make sense that uh, like, let's compare, for example, uh, the number here at 4 versus the number, say, at 2. Does it make sense that the uh, when the radius is 2, the, the rate at which it's decreasing is faster than when the radius was at 4? Okay, so why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because it's right, but does that jive with your experience uh, consuming drinks in upside down cones? Does that, you know, kind of make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, so think about that the next time. Well, you know, it's not as if we get to be doing this very often now, uh, thanks to the coronavirus. But when the coronavirus thing um, is, um, uh, is all over and we all get to go out and have martinis, then we can, we can kind of think about this. Um, okay. So any questions on that problem?
All right, Ethan, you're good. Everybody else good? All right, well, let's move on to one that involves a little bit of trig just for, uh, for funsies. Um, okay, so let's, um, let's take this situation, and this one I'm going to steal from the book. Um, so let's say that we've got, um, oops, let's say that we have a situation where there's an airplane, and because of my art sucks, I'll just call it P. And there's, at point A, there's an anti-aircraft uh, gun. And let's say that the plane is firing, I mean, is flying at um, <clears throat> 10,000 feet. And so uh, at A, uh, the gun is going to have to rotate uh, in order to track P if P is flying towards the um, towards the anti-aircraft gun. And so the question is, how fast does it have to be able to turn uh, in order to track the uh, the target? All right. So the first thing is dx dt would be the rate at which the plane is flying. And um, I'll say, just making it up, that it's negative 500. Um, so the reason it's negative is because it's flying towards the any aircraft gun rather than away. Um, OK, so we have all the information we need here, um, or almost all the information we need. What is the key equation in this case? So what's something that's going to relate uh, the variables in question? So, yeah, tangent of uh, theta in this case, right? So, uh, just because we have a right triangle doesn't mean that Pythagoras' theorem is going to be what we want to use. Um, in this case, what would actually be better uh, is a trig function. And part of that is because the angle there is something we cared about. So, we'll say tangent of theta is in this case opposite over adjacent so it'd be 10,000 over x um, and uh, yeah now we could have used sine or cosine uh, the problem with using sine or cosine is that they both involve the hypotenuse of the triangle and we don't know the hypotenuse of the triangle uh, but we do know the two legs or at least one of the legs of the triangle um, okay, so the next thing we need to do is to differentiate. So I'm going to rewrite our key equation as this. Um, that'll make the differentiation step easier because what is the derivative of tangent? Derivative of tangent is, yep, secant squared. All right, so on the left, we'll have secant squared theta times d theta dt. And on the right, we'll have negative 10,000 x to the minus 2. Um, and so if I rewrite this, I could say d theta dt is negative 10,000 over x squared times cos squared of theta. Um, 
Now, the reason that it's co-squared on the right-hand side is because remember that secant really is 1 over cosine. So if I divide both sides by secant squared, what I'm really doing is multiplying both sides by cosine squared. And uh, so I can write it in that form there. Okay, um, now this is a little bit annoying uh, because we need to know, uh, in order to find d theta dt, we need to know um, um, we need to know what x is, and we also need to know what theta is, or rather what cosine squared theta is. Okay, so let's do this for a couple of different values. So suppose x is one mile. Okay, um, so then uh, which would be 5,280 feet, right, just to keep things, uh, do we not need to include the dx dt there? Uh, good point, thank you. I forgot that. Right, so see, even I managed to forget those. Um, the dx, dt's, and whatever, right? Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, so my bad. Uh, so if x is one mile, uh, and so that's 5,280 feet, um, really would have been nicer to do this in, in metric units, but whatever. Um, we need to figure out uh, what cos squared theta is. So our specific situation there is that we have 5,280 there, and we have 10,000 there, and I'm not drawing this to scale at all. Um, now, I don't actually care what theta is. All I care about is what's the cosine of theta, or rather, what's the cosine of theta squared. Um, okay, so in order to do that, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and so I need to find the hypotenuse there. And the hypotenuse would be the square root of 10,000 squared uh, plus 5280 squared. Um, and so then the cos squared of theta uh, would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse squared. And so give me a quick moment. I'm going to do a quick calculator. Um, I'm going to just uh, calculator this real quick. Um, and so we get, all right, so it comes out to, um, for sake of, uh, so it comes out to uh, 4356 over 1998.1, which is approximately 0.21. Okay, great. Um, now that we have that, uh, we can substitute everything in. And so d theta dt would need to be equal to negative 10,000 over 5280 squared times, um, oh, this is nice. Actually, um, I should have written it this way to begin with because then I noticed something. And dx dt was negative 500. Okay, so uh, the reason that maybe I should have just written it like this in the first place is because then the 5280s cancel, and that just simplifies the, uh, the math a little bit. Um, okay, but let me just uh, calculator this out and see what we get. Um, Okay, so the 
um, negative 10,000 times negative 500 divided by the square root of, oh, wait, and sorry, it uh, the square root here is squared, so there's not actually a square root in the denominator, because it was cosine squared, not cosine. Um, okay, so I get approximately, oops, approximately 0 0.039. Um, okay, now we have to get a little bit picky for just a minute. What are the units associated with that? So d theta dt is 0 0.039 what? Not miles per hour. Okay, so what, what are we talking about here? Theta is an angle, right? So what units do we measure it in? All right, so it's actually in radians um, per hour. And the reason that I know that it has to be in radians and not in degrees is because of this right up here. Okay, so all of the formulas that we know for trig derivatives actually depend on theta being measured in radians, not in degrees. Um, okay, now, radians per hour as sort of a number, like 0.039 radians per hour, that doesn't mean anything to anybody. So I can convert this into to degrees per hour, um, and the way that we'll convert it is we'll multiply by 180 and divide by pi. And then again, just to compute that, compute that real quick, uh, that comes out to about 2.2 .2 degrees per hour. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so generally speaking, in calculus, everything should be assumed to be in radians um, until, uh, and if you want things in degrees, you have to convert. Um, okay, all right, so uh, we should probably quit here. So I'll post a new assignment to Edfinity uh, with some of these problems. Um, it will take, uh, these problems do take some time. Um, you'll need to kind of go slow with them and um, uh, write. So uh, any questions, uh, just hit me up on Discord and uh, I'll go ahead and end the stream now and I'll see you guys whenever.